started. We're just a couple of minutes past the official starting time, so that seems like a good time to get started. Um, thank you all very much for coming to the Open Government Miniconf. Um, what we're going to, today, what we decided to do was have a day of panel discussions, primarily so that we could actually uh, get in as much content and discussion as possible, because uh, we wanted to make it so that everyone can contribute and, and capture a whole bunch of ideas. Uh, what I originally had, and, and I should just put up front, what are we doing? <laughs> uh, my name's Pia, uh, for those who don't, haven't met me. Uh, I should um, just put up front that a lot has changed uh, since the, um, this, this Open Government Mini-Conf was actually first uh, suggested. And, uh, and I basically have had the last two months of my life completely robbed from me while trying to organise um, Tim Berners-Lee to come to Australia. So uh, it's, a little, it's slightly less organised than I would normally like, but um, luckily we have amazing people in the community like Canary, who's just down the front here, who massively picked up the pieces and helped pull it all together. So a huge thank you in advance to Canary. Thank you very much from me. Yeah. It's really from me, but I'll make you thank him as well, so that works. Um, what I wanted to do in the first case was this State of the Federation idea. So I'm going to give you just a bit of an idea of where things are at, um, and in particular how things have changed just over the last sort of six months, because a lot of things are actually starting to move fairly fast in Australia now. So I'll talk for probably only about 10 minutes, uh, and then what I want to do is really get into this uh, open discussion about what we want to see. Because how many people here are sort of involved in the open government or Gov 2.0 space in Australia at the moment? Anyone? A few. Okay. So just for the rest of you, um, first of all, yes, we completely understand the term Gov 2.0 is a stupid term. Yes, it is a stupid term, right? In the same way that Web 2.0 is a stupid term, in the same way that Cloud is a stupid term, in the same way that Social Media Expert is a ridiculous term. Um, <laughs> fact is, there is a lot of um, drive around the world at the moment to try and do things different. There's a lot of theories as to why it started to take off, you know, and the more optimistic people are like, oh, well, you know, because people are starting to understand the value of freedom. Well, that's true, and that's nice, and that's all good. But it's also, um, th there's actually a lot of things that have been simmering below the surface, though, for quite, a, quite some time. And I'll give you one of the very practical, practical pragmatic examples. Um, one of the things that's changed in the last um, uh, six months uh, since I put this mini-conf together was um, uh, I've started now working in the federal government finally. Uh, I finally got my security clearance, which only took 17 months. And because, um, you know, I'm, I'm a geek and I lived in China. Um, but um, I've started working in the federal government, working for an agency that actually looks at whole of government technology. And um, as of the 4th of February, as of next Monday, I'll be working for Australia, the Australia, first ever whole of Australian government um, CTO. And we're going to be looking at a lot of this space. And I'm going to be given uh, carriage of a lot of the whole of government uh, Gov 2.0 agenda, which is actually very exciting. So part of what I want to do today, originally the idea was to sort of try and put down some pragmatic things that we want to see as a community, because you know I'm sick of having conversations about we just need to do more. Let's define what it is that we want to do. Um, but um, as a nice sort of follow-up to this, I'm going to be able, uh, in, and in a useful position, to actually go and implement some of this stuff and work collaboratively with the community, you know, the existing and the growing community community around this stuff. But the term Gov2.0 kind of means three things. Um, the term sort of open government, how it's come to mean from a, a, a modern sense of the word. Because in olden sense, of course, open government means just being transparent in how you do your parliament. Australia has one of the most transparent democracies in the world. Doesn't make it you know, as transparent as we'd like it, but it is absolutely one of the most best in the world. I went to a conference uh, three months ago that, um, and I met with people from 25 different countries talking to them about open data, about parliamentary transparency, about what they're doing um, in public engagement sort of space. And um, some countries were actually in the process of rolling back their freedom of information uh, laws, in, in the process of uh, trying to actually make more secret the way that their parliaments work. It was really quite scary, and it was, it was a good at, um, reason to appreciate, I guess, where we have it here at the moment, even though we can always do better, of course. Um, but the opportunity, is, so, so the three things that it kind of are is um, transparency, so open data. There is so much government data that is generated just as a matter of course of government um, that, you know, for which there are not privacy implications or you can actually, you know, make it um, reasonably de-identified and you have to go through appropriate processes and all that kind of stuff for sure. But if we can get more of that data available, not only can we create better policy across government and actually have governments, you know, having better informed, uh, departments being better informed right across the spectrum, um, but, you know, as the public, we can actually, you know, do better analysis and better investigation and actually um, make sure that what's being talked about is, is what's being delivered effectively. Um, the second thing is about public engagement. 
Rather than governments trying to come up with all the answers all the time, we really are at a point now in history where individuals are more empowered than ever before. We can come up with the solutions ourselves, we can connect with our peers, we can connect, we can develop the skills, we can work with people all around the world to solve things in new and interesting ways. So if government doesn't actually engage people with people in the process of developing how they're going to do things or how we're going to do things in future, then it's very, it's very hard to respond in a quickly and usefully way, dare I say agile way. Um, it's very hard to um, uh, make sure that uh, new emergencies and new opportunities that come up, uh, you know, we're able to effectively um, engage with, I guess. So, um, so public engagement is all about not just sort of writing the policy and then telling people how it is, but actually writing the policy collaboratively with people and then develop, co-developing, I guess, the future together. The third area of, um, uh, is what they like to call citizen-centric services. Has anyone heard this term before? Yeah, a few of you. Okay. For those that haven't, what it basically means is rather than having a situation where I'm a department and I have this service and so I'm going to build a website and you, you, know, you, you can come and create a login and you can access this service and then times that by every you know, unit in every uh, government department in every government, because you know, we have three layers here, which of course makes it even more complicated. But as a citizen, I don't care which department is actually delivering a particular service. I want to say, you know what, I don't even trust you as the government. I want to be able to put in my postcode only, um, and you tell me what health services are available to me, or you tell me what, um, uh, you know, what, whatever sort of services are available to me, maybe at some point I'll create a login and if I do then you know, I, need, I need to know that I am in charge of my own data and I need to make sure that the data, I need to trust that the system is going to do what the system is going to do. But I, I want to engage with government as a single entity. Now government, particularly federal government, is not in the habit of it, thinking of itself as a, as a whole entity. It tends to think of itself in lots and lots of little departments and such. And, um, but citizen-centric services is the concept of putting the citizen at the centre of the design of how it's going to operate. So basically, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lesson in empathy, <laughs> weirdly enough, uh, but basically saying, well, how would I want to use this? Because if I, you know, if I'm, and Canberra is actually, how many people who live in Canberra? Oh, great. You will all be very um, you know, aware of the Canberra Connect uh, service. So you've got uh, an online service, you can go and you can change your address and it automatically changes your address in all the systems that you're registered in for, for the Canberra government, for the state slash local government in the region. No one else does that. Basically none of the other states and certainly federal, you don't really have that, that possibility. And even though it's a very small thing, it's, a, it's an example of what you can do when you start to actually have again, appropriately done, but um, cross-departmental approach to actually dealing with citizens in a consistent single way. So, um, those are those three things. And the three things have been coming along. Uh, we had the uh, gov 2 task force a few years ago now, about four years ago now, I, I guess it was, um, uh, which came out with a whole bunch of recommendations. A lot of those recommendations have been implemented. And um, I'll, I'm, I'm very happy to, uh, to be able to say that a huge amount of progress actually has been made. You know, you always want it to be made more, but we now have um, uh, lots of um, uh, interest in open data, lots of interest in, in uh, public engagement. There's uh, something, there's hundreds of sort of accounts on various different social media where they're actually being effectively used by government departments and agencies to actually talk to people, not just to talk at people. Um, there's a lot of uh, better actual consultations going online. Uh, there's uh, open data projects have been a little bit slow to kick off um, and um, Gov, data gov AU, you know, kicked off a few years ago, but uh, it's still in very early phases. I'm, uh, we'll be fixing that soon, <laughs> um, but, um, but there's data projects happening all around the country, which is very exciting. And there's this whole citizen-centric design is starting to really take off as well, because departments have been under pressure to do more with less for, you know, for a long time. So what's happened is that the way that they've done things hasn't really fundamentally changed in a lot of years. Um, it's just been, you know, squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. But the way, the expectations of the people has, has fundamentally changed. So we need to change the way that we do services delivery, otherwise, you know, people just won't basically use our services um, uh, where they can get away with it. So, uh, and where they don't need to. So uh, we need to actually change the way that this, uh, so there's a lot of money actually going in now to trying to change um, service delivery and start to see this concept, which I love, of government as an API. You know, if you see your data as an API, if all of the services that you provide are provided as an API, and you know, in this room we'll understand what that means more than um, most, then you've got the possibility of saying, okay, well, let's do a health service that just talks to all these, you know, a health aggregated service that talks to all the APIs of all the different services and all the different data providers, whichever department they're in, and now you can actually create a thematic approach to government. Is this making sense? 
Yeah? So I mean, this governance and API thing is really starting to take off. Of course, you need to explain what API means in the first case to half the people I need to talk to about it. But, um, but once they start to get it, then, then I think we have a better opportunity.